on today's show, we have somebody that I have to say is somewhat close to me, but she doesn't know she's close to me yet, but she's close to me because I am a fellow Long Islander, grew up on Long Island, live in New York City now. You guys all know her as the Long Island medium. Welcome, Teresa Caputo to Pitbull's Globalization. Oh my God, this is amazing. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Oh my gosh, we are so happy to have you. Uh, so first and foremost, I know you're about to be a grandma. Congratulations. It still hasn't sunk in yet. I can't believe that my baby is having a baby. <laughs> oh my God. Do you know what the gender is yet? We do not. We do not. We're finding out in about another week. So okay. you'll okay. have to Do you have any guesses. I, I'm, I'm always wrong when it comes to my own stuff. I'm always wrong. I this is why I say my family gets screwed out of readings out of uh, because I always think like, oh, is this just me remembering something or and with even with my own kids, I was wrong. I thought my son was a girl and I thought Victoria was a boy. So <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because when it comes to readings, you're so spot on with everything. Yeah. But when it comes to real life stuff, it's like you might have a little bit that you got to work on there. huh? Well, I think I, I think that's a, one of the one misconception that people have about what I do, I, I don't predict things. I don't tell people what to do with their lives or simply just spirit is giving them the gift of peace. One thing that I do definitely want to get into, the reason why I wanted to have you on the show today is because a week from this weekend is a major date that is etched in all of our minds. And of course, we know that date to be September 11th. And September 11th, 2001 was a day that we will all, all remember. We're coming up on that 20 year anniversary and going back just to that date, what do you remember on that date specifically? Cause we all have a story. I remember putting my kids on the bus and coming back into the house and watching the news and watching in disbelief. It was almost like I was, we were in a dream. That's how I felt. I, I know th this could not be real. And, you know, just like just wanting to have my kids home safe with me and um, just making sure that they were OK and my family members. And it was just such a, a whirlwind. Well, but that's the thing, you know, that's the thing that I realized by doing this special that when we lose a loved one, we grieve them. Right. We the, the day that they pass is a hard day for us. We go over certain things, but we also kind of let go of certain things that we don't want to remember, right? The family members of 9-11, think about it. They have to every year relive their loved one's death second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour. And that was well, something that I, I didn't realize. And the thing that I find so powerful also, and what I loved about doing the special was we're getting a look at the family members, their lives, not just the name of the person that died that day. For the souls of the departed to validate that they knew what was going on these past 20 years, amazing. And some people might think, oh, it's 20 years. But the healing that was done was unbelievable. And it's something that's going to be in their lives and our lives forever. Mm -hmm. So even when people say 20 years, well, I will never forget 20 no. years ago. Right. You know, if you've watched Long Island Medium, even my live shows, like, I, I don't know who I'm reading. I don't know. I don't even know th their name, really. They tell me their name as they're walking up to my front door, <laughs> you know. So this special was a little bit different because I knew that their loved one died either in 9-11 or connected to 9-11. That was the only thing that I, that I knew. And the stories, like, how would I know? Like the spirit would, because they bring me through the departure. One minute I'm in a stairwell and, you know, an, an, another minute I'm, I'm, I'm making a phone call and saying, you know, I'm no man left behind. It was just... It's still, I still have a hard time talking about it. I can. That's how powerful the special is. Now getting into the special, Long Island Medium in memory of 9-11, which is going to be premiering coming up this week on September 9th. It's going to be on um, TLC and then Discovery Plus. Uh, I'm sure over the years, you've definitely spoken to many people that have been impacted, especially by 9-11. What made you want to deliver these messages to the families 20 years later? You know, when the network came to me and, and asked me if I would 
do this special, I was hand, hands down, absolutely. Uh, not only, you know, being from New York, but realizing that um, even after 20 years, that these families still deserved and needed peace. A lot of people don't know this, but 9-11 was the turning point for me to accept my gift. Because at that point, I had been struggling with my gift for over five years of like, okay, all right, if this is who God intended me to be, and this is my soul's journey, who's going to want to come and see a medium? I, I don't understand this. This is crazy. And 9-11 was that realization for me that people are left with burdens and guilt. Should have, could have, would have, only ifs. And they can't heal if they're too busy beating themselves up with these emotions. And so that's how I, I chose to use my gift for then to help people move on after the loss of a loved one. And how many people weren't supposed to be there that day? How many Absolutely. people went into work? How many people didn't go to work that day? Or what I learned on flight 93 who weren't supposed to be on that flight. Wow. So, uh, the, the stories of how people ended up there that day were also just mind blowing. I know that you visited a lot of the sites. So I'm sure mm -hmm. that you went down obviously to the 9-11 site. I know you were in Pennsylvania and you were over by the Pentagon. While you're actually roaming around these sites, do you ever get messages from spirits that belong to people that you don't know who they belong to? And if you do, how do you deliver that message? And how do you know who to deliver that message to? Spirit always takes care of that. <laughs> They, you know, I always sense and feel things. And a lot of times, even if the person that I'm directly speaking to might not be for that person, they know the person that it's for. So it was interesting that you brought up visiting the sites. The one site that I had the most contact with was the Shanksville, which uh, is such a be beautiful uh, and very, very emotional memorial. Like, like, them, like they all are. But when I... Um, was there, I mean, to actually be on the grounds of where the plane landed, the mm -hmm. family actually brought me back there. Only family members are allowed back there, or unless if you're escorted by a family member and to be uh, in that exact spot. It was interesting because I wasn't able to feel things the way I typically felt things. And I know that that was the souls protecting me from what they went through. Take me through like a moment that you actually felt? So when I was reading souls that passed in say the Freedom Tower, I would, you would hear my voice start to get raspy because I would literally feel like I smoked a pack of cigarettes because of all of the smoke. When I went to Shanksville, I literally couldn't feel anything. I, I could almost hear commotion and I didn't understand it at first. From the second I stepped out of the car, I could hear commotion but I felt at peace and I didn't quite understand it, but I couldn't feel anything else. Once I started channeling the souls, I realized um, that they did not want me to feel what they felt. Wow. Because they knew um, what was going to happen. They were fighting for almost an hour. So um, to feel that, was um, very powerful. It was something that has affected me that day and will never leave me. I don't think there's a day that goes by that I don't think of Shanksville. The strength and the resilience of these family members, each and every person that I had the privilege of sharing my gift with is just incredible. You know, Deborah, um, she made such an impact on my life. Her, her daughter was one of the youngest that died on flight 93 yeah. and um, her daughter was not supposed to be on that plane. She was coming to Shanksville to have the experience and her flight was canceled and changed due to weather and she still got on that plane and came. Most people would have said, oh, I'm not, right? I'm not getting on that plane. Her daughter, I mean, actually, I mean, her daughter had me talk about it. it, it, it I don't know if you had the opportunity to see the trailer. I did, um, which was chilling in itself. I, I mean, for her to say that she wrote about it. I mean, at age 11, nine years before 9-11. Yes, saying that she was going to die in a plane. Yeah, but she drew the picture of the exact way that the plane landed. And 
Deborah didn't realize she had the journal in her pocket. I'm like, why is your daughter? She keeps telling me about what she wrote about this journal. And are you going to talk about the journal or write about the journal? And the gentleman that Deborah was with said, you brought her journal and she, her literally you, her face was like, like her face dropped. And she's like, yes, I have it right here. And I mean, you, you can't make these things up. I mean, at the end of the day, if, and I learned this a very long time ago. Um, and that's why I appreciated what you said, you know, about how this does help people look going to a medium isn't for everyone. It's not, but it, not. it helps those who are searching for peace. Mm -hmm. And, and what I loved about this special were, was these are facts, no matter what people think or what they assume or their misconceptions about me or the work that I do, these are facts. And each person had such an amazing, amazing experience that they were even willing to come on shows and talk about it. That's how powerful and how much it changed their life. So while you were at some of these sites, did any other messages come through that you're going to be relaying in the special that weren't um, significantly for any of the families that you got a chance to speak to on the special? Other souls had stepped forward that didn't pass in 9-11. For example, on one of the special, a Lourdes, uh, her sister was on flight 93. And as her sister was channeling, she said, tell my sister, I have the brother with me. And her brother, unfortunately, died tragically after. The only reason why I'm asking is because let's just say we went down to 9-11 together. Would you be getting messages from souls that are there that have no connection to either of us, but just want to relay a message? Oh, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. And do you ever remember what any of those messages are? Or it's just that you kind of are there at the moment and then um, it just goes... I'm there in the moment, you know, some things I remember, like if I'm in an, an interview or something like this, spirit will reshow me things. Why I talked about Deborah because she popped in my head. There, there was one woman that I read and her son was young at the time. And the, the, her husband kept coming through and just saying, tell him about the baseball. <laughs> and he, apparently there's a recording down in the freedom. I've never been down to the freedom tower. And apparently there's recordings through the museum or through the exhibit mm -hmm. and through the memorial. And that is what the little boy said. I wonder if my dad knows that I play baseball. I want my dad to know that I play baseball. Wow. Again, so chilling. And, you yeah. know, that just brings me back to these naysayers and the people that just want to sit here and say that, you know, psychics like yourself do this just to prey on the grieving or to prey on people who have, you know, their emotions that are going wild. Yeah. And, you know, with that, what do you have to say to them? I get it. I'm the first one to say what I do is crazy. How can someone communicate with someone that has died? I get it. But spirit, and, and there are a lot of common things that spirit might talk about and refer to, right? But what I have spirit do is with every healing message, they have to validate it with something completely unique to the person that spirit is speaking to. So it'll be something that the person is not expecting their loved one to talk about. It could be something that happened years ago, something that happened after they died. And I love when spirit talks about the things that we experience, mm -hmm. the things that we see and how we feel, the things that we said to them in our own personal thoughts or prayers that we didn't share with anyone else. Absolutely. And and it's not a thing to say, oh, then believe in what I do. I want believe in yourself, believe in the soul connection, believe in the soul bond, know that there's more to life than this. Know that those things that go on around you that you think that are odd or weird. So I, I just, I just saw this. It's, I love when someone says, oh, well, I don't believe in that. And then they'll be like, well, they're showing me uh, that you smell them like a, a cologne bottle. And they're like, yeah, you know, I smell my, my dad's cologne all the time. And I'm thinking, why am I smelling that? That's your dad. Like that's him <laughs> saying hello. That's a little hello from heaven. <laughs> we could talk about this for hours. I have people that, you know, never believed. And then, you know, I've yeah. done stories about this on the air before where people are like, I wasn't a believer. And then all of a sudden the psychic told me a deep, dark secret that I only shared with my grandmother. And right. they were like, nobody knows that, you know? Right. And when I hear those things, not only do I get chills, but I'm like, now you see that it's real and you don't have to believe it. You just have right. to 
You just kind of have to embrace it. But if you actually go with an open mind and just hear what someone has to say, it might be enlightening. For years, I always said, I don't know what happens. It's like, like I have no personal thoughts, feelings, or emotions. It's, it's almost like my my brain flatlines. And I actually did something on Dr. Oz where uh, uh, Dr. Amen read my brain as I read someone. And he showed, he says, you access a part of your brain that we typically don't. And it, it was like my brain like flatlined. Being a New Yorker, a lot of us all know people or at least yeah. mm-hmm. know somebody who knows somebody. I personally actually knew three people that did pass away in 9-11. Uh, two of them that I actually knew better than the third. The third I actually had found out I went to high school with, wow. which I didn't even know until I was, you know, going through the names and stuff. And, you know, wow. obviously Facebook and all that. And the messages came through, but it's like, yeah, you're, we're all like sitting there with questions that we're dying to know. But if there are people that do have questions that, you know, they want to ask of you, what's the best way for them to reach you? Yeah, I have a podcast called Hey Spirit, where, and I also have a hotline where people can call and leave a message. Um, if even if it's someone that they know that would love to have the experience, and um, they can be a guest on my podcast. And of course, they could always reach you as well on your uh, your Instagram page, your Twitter page. Yeah. I know that you're super active on that stuff too. I am. So everything's uh, Teresa Caputo. Uh, and if you want to call the hotline, it's one eight six six T Caputo. You know, and you said it perfectly. You don't have to, I say to people, you don't have to believe in yourself. That's it. Yep, absolutely. Well, again, the special is going to be airing this uh, this week on September 9th, Long Island Medium. Teresa Caputo, we love having you. It's Long Island Medium in memory of 9-11. I want to say thank you so much for actually, you know, taking the time to do something like this because every year, I don't, I feel that we do shed light on the situation, but I don't feel that we shed enough light on it Mm. that it deserves and the recognition that it deserves, because this is something that is going down with us for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. And they are true American heroes.